So when we calculate cap M for every point along the um, um, along the line of a beta, say from a beta of zero up to a beta of one, and along to a beta of two, etc., what we end up with is a um, is a line in the in the form, and I'm going to write it below here. So here's the the cap M formula. The expected return of stock I equals the beta of I times the equity risk premium plus the risk-free rate and the risk-free rate is a constant and the um, the uh, beta times the equity risk uh, sorry the equity risk premium is the slope of the line and the beta is how far along um, the line we need to go to find the expected return of uh, this individual stock so the line is in the form of y, so uh, expected return of i is the y component equals, and I'm going to color code them in the same way. So m x plus b, where b is the constant and the uh, the point of the y intercept which will be equal to the risk free rate x is the slope of the slope of the line which is the equity risk premium and m is going to be the the beta coefficient the co the coefficient um, by which we multiply the slope coefficient so I'm just going to scroll down and uh, have a crack at drawing the um, the line which can't which is produced by the the cap M, which we call the security market line or SML. So the SML, where the um, y-axis is the return and the x-axis is the beta which I'll put in red for risk, I'll put return in green for good and red beta for bad, the, the risk to return. So what we start off with is the the risk free rate, so I'm going to put that, that's the constant and the y intercept, so um, in my example we had the 2% risk free rate, so that's what I'm going to use in the example. So 2% and I'm going to use that as the risk-free rate and it's just a, a baseline. So that is the return you can get by investing in um, risk-free assets. All right. Now the line itself is going to start at the wide set of the risk-free rate and it's going to increase by a slope of the equity uh, risk premium multiplied by its coefficient which is beta here at the bottom so of course when we when we um, multiply the coefficient by uh, by one where we multiply the coefficient by a beta of one then we'll have a beta exactly the same as the market so this will be the beta of the market portfolio and consequently it will have the return the return of the market portfolio as well so one is beta of the market and return of the market okay then if we come down to um, a beta of 0 0.5 so we're talking about an, as an asset which is half as risky as the market beta then as we approach the um, SML line so we times we times the market beta by half and so we get half of the risk premium we end up with half of the 
of the risk premium. So what, what I think we can tell that this distance is the same as this distance here. So time, multiplying by 0 0.5, we're effectively getting half of the equity risk premium. So I can I can write that as uh, half ERP plus so it's half the ERP plus the risk free rate as a baseline. As we rise up and we go to um, two, so here we would have two times beta of the market. Then as we go up here. Then at two times beta of the market, we've got an asset which is twice, twice as risky, twice as risky as the market, and we need twice the equity risk premium. So it's two, so it's two times the equity risk premium plus the risk free rate. That's the return here. So if the market return is a risk premium of as above it was six plus a risk free of two, then the total is eight. 2 times the equity risk premium would be 12 plus 2 is 14. So this could be, in the example, this would be 14%. Uh, the market return would be um, eight, a uh, total of 8%. And half the equity risk premium, half of 6 is 3 plus 2. This would be 5% return. So this would be 5. This would be 8 and this would be 14 high. And this is called the security market line or the SML and it's basically a graph, um, a graphical representation of the cap M multiplied by the beta of asset I.